Welcome to Botany Section 1, Plant Classification and Names. In this presentation, we will cover how plants are classified botanically and how the scientific plant naming system works. This list shows some of the many useful ways plants can be grouped or classified. When shopping or looking for plants for specific needs, these classifications are commonly used and can all be important. They help us to put plants in correct spaces in the landscape or understand their life cycle. Grouping plants according to landscape uses, such as by light requirements or tolerance to salt, are also extremely useful. Perhaps the most common way plants are classified are by cold hardiness. Confusion often occurs when using common names for plants. The same common name may refer to many different plants. The name daisy is just such an example. To eliminate this confusion, scientists classify plants and other living organisms according to scientific names. Trees and shrubs are grouped as woody plants, while plants without woody stems are referred to as herbaceous. Trees and shrubs are further grouped by those that keep their foliage, or are evergreen, and those that lose their foliage, or are deciduous, in winter. Evergreen trees can have broad leaves, needles, or scales. Those with needles can be divided into spruce, pine, fir, or other needle-bearing trees. Plants can also be grouped according to their life cycles, as annuals, biennials, or perennials. Annual plants complete their life cycle in one growing season, Bien biennial plants in two seasons, Perennial plants live three years or longer. Annual plants fall into two functional groups. Those that are true annuals that complete their life cycle in one year or growing season, even if good growing conditions continue. Seasonal annuals are perennial plants in warmer climates, but die locally when cold weather sets in. Almost all annuals planted in landscapes are seasonal annuals. A common example of a true annual is sweet alyssum, while tomatoes and impatiens are seasonal annuals. Monocot plants are those that are usually grass-like, with long spiky leaves, and dicot plants are those with broad leaves. The terms monocot and dicot are short for monocotyledon and dicotyledon. These refer to structures found within the seeds of these plants that help the food stored in the seed get into the embryo. Additionally, monocots do not produce wood, have parallel veins in their leaves, and most have their growing points near the soil level. Dicot plants may be woody or herbaceous, have growing points located all over the plant, and have net-like leaf veins such as the maple leaf pictured here. As mentioned earlier, scientific names are a way to classify plants that helps to eliminate confusion with common names. All living organisms are classified and named with the binomial nomenclature system. The term binomial means there are two parts to the name. It was developed by Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish physician, and is known as the Linnaean system. These names are also called scientific names, botanical names, or Latin names. Linnaeus named plants with Latin names. Latin was selected because it is a language that is not spoken by any society today, and it no longer changes. The first name of a plant identifies the genus or genre. Closely related plants are grouped together under this single name. Plants in a genus are further separated by individual characteristics and given a specific epithet. Together, the genus and specific epithet form the scientific name of a plant. Besides using the genus and specific epithet to describe a plant species, other groupings describe a plant's identity even more distinctly. Publications often list variety, cultivar, or hybrid along with a botanical name. Plant varieties are a variant of a plant species where the variation happened in the wild with no influence by man. Varieties are similar to a subspecies. 
I will use the thornless honey locust as an example of how this name is used. The normal species is just simply honey locust with the scientific name Gleditsia tricanthos. Tricanthos means three-spined, referring to the three points of each thorn. A thornless variant was found in the wild and was given the variety name Inermis, which means unarmed, and so the variety is thornless. A cultivar is a variant of a plant species where the variation was influenced by man while the plant was in cultivation. The term cultivar is short for cultivated variety. The blood good Japanese maple, pictured at top here, is a good example, as is Shade Master Thornless Honey Locust, pictured below. Plant breeders cross different species to develop plants with superior characteristics. Hybrids are indicated with an X in their botanical name. One example is Autumn Blaze Maple. It is the result of plant breeding using Acer saccharinum, silver maple, and Acer rubrum, red maple, as parents. It grows faster than either parent due to hybrid vigor and is somewhat more tolerant of alkaline soil than either parent. The writing of scientific names follows specific rules. Genus names should always be in italics or underlined and are always capitalized. The specific epithet is always in italics or underlined and never capitalized. Variety names are written like the specific epithet, in italics and not capitalized. Cultivar names are not in italics or underlined and always capitalized and always in single quotes. Understanding these rules can provide additional information about the plant being evaluated.